views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Wake up, step up, power up with a shot of Joe. This hit show provides the information, inspiration, and tools people need to make positive changes in all areas of life. Join Joe the second and fourth Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern for 30 minutes of higher energy, no nonsense, and powerful tools to make powerful changes. So wake up, step up, and power up. You are listening to A Shot of Joe now. Hi, everybody. How are you? This is Joe Nunziata. I want to welcome you to A Shot of Joe. Excited to have you with me here today. This is our first show of 2018. So hopefully you had a great holiday and new year, holiday season and new year transition into this new energy of 2018. So I'm really excited for this year, especially, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Also, my new book, Chasing Your Life, just came out yesterday, which was on the 9th. So I'm excited about that as well. You can check that out at ChasingYourLife.net. You can go to ChasingYourLife.net and you can also get a free audio preview of the book and you can also get the book there. I'm going to talk about that book today and that's going to be our topic of conversation, talking about chasing things in your life and why you do it and what's behind it. We're going to talk about that in detail today. And before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about 2018 because we're moving into you know a new year and every year carries its own energy and vibration. So we know each year is a little bit different. So 2017 you know, a lot of us were discussing it, other my friends and people I work with and do this work with, we were talking about 2017 before it happened. And we knew that 2017 was going to be a kind of a rough year to a degree, you know, as far as transitioning and a lot of changes and basically a lot of new energy coming in. And for people like myself and a lot of you who do this work, you might have really felt it last year, a lot of energy coming in, a lot of moon activity, a lot of emotional issues, a lot of changes, a lot of shifting. Obviously, we we saw it starting before the year even began. We had a big surge of energy in September of 16. And then, of course, we had the election here in the United States, and that created a big ripple of energy. And, of course, we went through 2017, and we've had all these other issues with the sexual harassment suits. And we've seen iconic figures across the board in our world. We've seen it in government. We've seen it in entertainment. We've seen it in the broadcasting world. These people who were iconic figures that we watched for years and listened to and had respect for all these structures going down. So that was a big part of what was what was happening in 2017. I think we'll see more of that this year as we move into 2018. We will still see breakdowns of a lot of structure, old structure that no longer serves us as we move into higher energy and vibration. And also, I think we're going to have a lot of opportunities this year to make positive changes. Last year was the energy was a little slower. It was also, like I said, a lot of new energy coming in. It was kind of like you were dodging. I thought I was dodging through it and trying to get through it more. So this year we started a lot differently. Also, we ended 2017 in a Mercury retrograde, which was which was kind of a different, slower energy that ended this year early before the, before Christmas, actually in 2017. So we came into 18 in much different energy. So it's going to be a very interesting year. The key for you is going to be to really be aware of how you feel emotionally, where you are in your life. And this month, January, which is really interesting, we're actually starting and ending the month with a full moon, which is very rare, although it's going to happen again in March, which is also very rare. We January 1st, we had a a full moon, which was also a super moon. And then on January 31st, we have another full moon. And the way this is coming across is is really about using this month to clean up anything that's kind of hanging around, maybe some attachments you have, maybe some things that you're holding on to. And when I say holding on to, this could be anything. Could be something in the physical world, could be something, you know, could be money, could be a material possession, could be a relationship, could it could be any, you know, any of these things that maybe are no longer really serving you in your life and no longer purposeful. 
So now is going to be a time for you to really assess all these things and clean it up in the month of January. So you, by the time you get to February, as this energy continues to elevate, you'll be ready to jump on and jump into these opportunities. So I always like to kind of go into a little bit of what's happening, especially in the new year, as we move into new energy and new vibration. So my book came out, you know, this is a book, it's called Chasing Your Life. And it's a spiritual journey from stress to success and peace. And I made sure I added that in. It wasn't just about success. It was about success and peace. And of course, success is whatever you see it as. Is it, you know, success to me is being peaceful. I have a peaceful life. Think I have what I need. I'm being taken care of. I feel good. This is all, you know, I have good people around me. My relationships are healthy. That to me is what success looks like. Of course, we all have our own version. So what I really wanted to do was, was talk about this whole idea of chasing things, which many of us have grown up with in our lives as we were children, really coming into society. And also, it's part of who we are, this idea of chasing after stuff. It's kind of built into our DNA, but it does create a lot of pain and a lot of problems. And this is a book that I worked on for five years on and off. I kind of had the idea a while ago. I started working on it. Then I kind of got away from it, got back to it. And if you know, this is my fifth book and each book is different. Each book I've written, some were like, just kind of came out really quick and it just sat down and just blasted through them. This one was not like that. It was kind of coming to me in different time frames and based on different things that were happening in my life. And I wanted to write the book because I wanted to help people not do what I did. And I use my own father's story. My father was a New York City narcotics detective and he's a, he was the youngest of 12 kids and he went through his whole life chasing after attention and it ultimately cost him the ultimate price. So I use his story in the book as a foundation so that people can get an idea, just using something to give it a frame. It's not just about chasing, it's using a real life story. And I use other examples as well. So I want you to think about your own life right now and say to yourself, you know, what is it that I'm chasing after right now? What is it that I feel like I really want to bring in? What is it that I'm really going after or that I feel is very important for me? And take a step back and ask yourself, why? Why am I chasing after this thing? Why am I chasing after something external, something outside of myself? Now, when I say chasing, this is an interesting part of the work and an interesting part of this book, writing this book, was understanding the two sides of it. Because in the world of energy, every all energy has yin-yang energy, meaning there's positive and there's negative. So there's a positive charge of energy and there's a negative charge of energy to every feeling you have and everything that you do and everything that you say, all everything has that duality because that's really what the physical world is about. It's about the duality of positive and negative as we see it here in the third dimensional world. So when we think about chasing, when I say this to people, they say, well, what do you, Joe, what do you want me to do? Am I supposed to just sit around and not do anything with my life and not accomplish anything? And I said, no, that's nothing to do with it. So this is the difference. And this is really where I want to go with this today is discuss this from a different perspective. So when we look at ourselves as humans, we are innately built to invent and create and improve. This is how we are built. We're built to do this. We're built to create. We're built to improve ourselves. This is what it's all about. So as we go through our lives, we say, as we came here and started as cavemen and worked our way up, we always keep improving. We look at it and when we see technology, and we see the way we live now versus the way we lived 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. But I even go back, if I go back 20 years ago, not that long ago, you know, when you look at 1998, that's 20 years ago. And I remember getting a computer in 96, I would say probably, or 95, 96, when, when these things just started. So in 20 Five years ago, if you go back a little further or 30 years ago, we did not have computers. We did not have cell phones. We did not have any of these things. And these are all things that are here because we invented, we wanted to create, we wanted to make our lives better. And these are things that we enjoy. Now, obviously, all of these things also have two sides. One side is we use it. It's a tool. It's great. The other side is 
People get obsessed with it. People use it, they're looking at their phones and their cars and getting into accidents. People are using it to send out negative energy and hatred. So again, that's the two different sides of it. So one side of it is, well, I, I want to create and I want to expand and I want to improve my life. That's normal and that's something we do. The question becomes, how do I feel as I'm doing it? It's not about what you're doing, it's about how you feel as you do it. So do you feel like you are chasing after something? Do you feel like you're trying to chase this thing down or are you doing it just saying, hey, I'm just doing this because it feels good for me. It feels right for me. It feels like this is what I want to be doing. So it doesn't mean you can't do anything, but the idea behind it is to say, why am I doing it? And this is a question you want to get up with every day when you're doing things in your life. And you know, listen, we all have these mundane tasks that we do use, right? You know, that we do. We go out, we throw out garbage, or we wash the car, or we get, get you know, we go shopping, we go to the supermarket. These are, I'm not talking about these things. I'm not talking about these functional tasks that we do. I'm really talking about how you feel when you're doing things in your life, whether it's going to your job, taking care of your kids, spending time with your, in your relationship, in your, in your romantic relationship. What are your feelings? Why are you doing what you're doing? And do you feel like you're chasing after these things? Are you chasing after the career? Are you chasing after the money? Are you chasing after the car? Because you believe that if I get this certain position or car or whatever the case may be, that's going to make me happy. Or if I get this relationship or if I get married or if I have kids or if I buy the house, whatever it is that I do, do I feel that if I chase after this, if I get this thing, it will finally move me to this place where I will be happy? And that is really where we want to focus today is to go back to the question of why am I doing it? Why am I doing this and what is my feeling behind it? And that's really what I want to get into after the break. So you're listening to A Shot of Joe. I look forward to having, having you come back for me after the break. And we'll talk a little bit more about why you chase and how to move yourself from a chasing energy to a peaceful flowing energy and still have incredible accomplishments. I'll be back in a minute. Hi, this is Joe Nunziata. We're back to a shot of Joe. So thank you so much for being with me here today. We appreciate your time and energy. And Cheryl Gordon, who's with us on Facebook, she said, a good question. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So you're cleaning up, Cheryl, which is a good thing right now as, as we move into this January of, of our new energy in 2018. So we left off, I was saying, why? You know, and also, of course, the why question, right? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Which I know you're referring to as well. So this is a question that's important for us. I think what, what happens for us as people, you know, we get caught up in what we're doing and we go out there and we just kind of plod through the week. You know, we get up, we go to work or we take care of our kids or, you know, we, we do, you know, go out to dinner or go to a meeting or whatever we do. And, you know, the week comes to an end. And, you know, do you take any moment, do you take any time to kind of sit back and say, well, how do I feel? You know, how do I feel about this? Why am I doing this? So one of the things you want to look at is look at your look at when you, the way you grew up has a lot to do with your desire to chase and what you chase. So when you look at your childhood, you say, OK, when I grew up, where was the where was the focus? What was important in my household? So some people will say, well, you know, it was really important to do well in school and get a good education and get a good job. So that's that was the focus that we had growing up. And that's where we put a lot of our attention because that's, again, it really comes down to what happened at home and what your parents wanted you to do, because that creates your benchmark that kind of says, okay, this is important. I have to do this. Some people, it might've been make a lot of money. Some people, it might've been, you know, be in really good physical condition. It depends on, you know, or get a certain title, have a certain title or have a certain job. Or for some people, it would be, you know, make sure you get married by a certain age and you have kids and that's important. So really, the chasing is built into us because we have it anyway. And then, depending on how you grew up, you're going to have your own version of what you're chasing after. I'm chasing after the relationship, or I'm chasing after the money, or I'm chasing after the, the possession, whatever the case may be. So you want to look and say, okay, 
what did I learn growing up that was important? And am I still chasing after stuff that I learned was important when I was a kid? This is an important thing to look at for yourself because you may say, well, yeah, I'm still chasing after the money. I'm still chasing after the job. My mother always made everything about money. It was always about, you know, you have to make a lot of money. You have to be successful. This is what you have to do. It's all about money. So when I was growing up, my chase, a lot of my chasing was around being successful, being known, going out, you know, making a mark as far as what I was supposed to do. So all these things impact us and we unconsciously just start creating a cycle of chasing. And as we do that, we're creating energy. Now, understand that chasing energy is fear based energy because the question is why is this why am i so frantically going after this thing that is not a love based energy so at the end of the day the universe has a short menu when we deal with emotion we're really dealing with love and fear so most of the emotions we have are based on they're all based on love or fear at the base chasing is tied to the idea that i need a certain thing in order to be happy or in order to be successful, whatever it is that I think I, I'm doing. So now I have a fear-based need driving my behavior and understand that when you're in a chasing energy and you're in that fear-based need-driven energy, you're going to make decisions that are in alignment with that. So what happens is everything else goes away because your focus becomes just chasing this specific thing that I believe I need to get, because if I don't get it, I'm not going to be happy or successful or approved of or whatever it is that you're trying to get. And as I keep doing that, I keep digging myself deeper and deeper and deeper because what ends up happening is maybe you do accomplish something on there. Oh, wow, yeah, I did get this car. Well, I still don't feel it. I'm still not feeling it. I must need to get the house. I must need to get the, the, the husband or wife. I must need to get the kid. So what you keep it keeps you trapped in that fear-based, need-driven cycle of energy that you don't want to be in. So what we want to do is say, I want to do things. I want my base feeling, my baseline feeling, to be a feeling of love and to be tied to feelings of joy. If I'm not in that baseline feeling of love and joy, that I'm going to move into a, a negative energy of fear and chasing and need. That's a lack, also a lack-based feeling. We don't want to be there. And this is where it's important for you to make an assessment of where you are and say to yourself, am I chasing after stuff? Why am I doing it? Now, all you're chasing from a negative perspective is ego-based because your ego wants certain things that it believes is going to make you happy or successful or whatever it is. So the bottom line is you have to say, I don't need this stuff to be happy and successful, but it doesn't mean I can't have it. So understand something. It doesn't mean you can't have a certain car or live in a nice house or make a certain amount of money or have, you know, be married or be in a certain relationship or whatever it is that you're doing. You could do all that. That's not the point. And I think this is where we get trapped here. It's about, well, I have to give up everything and, you know, take a vow of poverty. It was funny because Growing up in Catholic school, I'll never forget being in, in one of the classes with the nuns and then saying to us, poverty brings you closer to God. So now think about this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. On one end, you, I'm learning to be successful and go out there and work hard and get a good job or whatever, get a career. And on the other end, you're telling me that poverty is going to bring me closer to God. So it's very confusing, right? You're a kid. You, well, I don't, well, I don't, I'm not getting this. So I want you, so again, that also impacts you. It's confusion. Well, did I purposely not become successful because I thought it was taking me away from being closer to God? Or was that something that's still in my consciousness somewhere? Is that something that's still in my belief system somewhere? Am I still holding on to this feeling? So these are things that I want you to be aware of as you go out there and look at what it is that you're chasing. Now, the other thing there's something interesting also. I see people, I, I talk about this a lot, where people are chasing time, meaning they're chasing after the past or the future. And a lot of people look at the past and they want to go back there. And they say, well, you know, I, I, wish, I, was, I wish I was in the past. I was happier then and things were different and my life was better or whatever was happening for me. Or maybe you were the star of the football team in high school. I mean, I have people tell me this. You know, I was, oh, that was great. When I was in school, those were my great years. And they keep bringing themselves, so they're chasing 
this past life that no, you know, you, you've, you've moved on, you know, now you're 50 years old, you're not in high school anymore, but you're still bringing yourself back there or you're chasing the future. You're chasing after what you believe. If I can get this, this will make my future better. And if I can get this, this will make my future better. So these are all the types of things that are going on with us on a daily basis. And all, what happens is when we chase time, we move ourselves out of the present and we disconnect our emotional self from our higher self, which is where we want to live. We want to live in a higher energy. I can't do that if I'm not present and I'm not connected. And I also want to be connected because when I'm connected, I'm getting the messages that are putting me on track for what I'm here to do without chasing. So I'm learning because I'm getting those downloads. I'm getting that information. I'm not chasing. I haven't moved myself out of the present moment because I'm chasing the future or I'm chasing the past or I'm chasing something. And I move myself into a different energy field where I'm being more present. Now, obviously, we plan for the future. That's fine. You may learn from the past. That's fine. These are all, you know, these are all good things. There's nothing wrong with it. But the idea is, where do I live most of the time? Where do I live the majority of my life? Am I living my life in the present? And am I, am I following my intuition? See, because your intuition gets distorted when you're chasing. Because now you might have said your intuition or your messages may be go this way, but your chasing is saying go this way. So you're, you get caught up here to say, well, my real feeling is saying, you know, I should be following this path, which is more aligned with me, but I'm so caught up in chasing after these other things that I'm not going with the progress. See, I'm not going with the flow then because I'm trying to hold on to this idea that if I chase the past, if I chase the future, if I chase this thing, I will be happy. So the key for you is going to be this, and it's one of the most powerful things that, I, that I've learned doing the work is really surrendering and say, I'm going to let go. I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm doing things. I'm not sitting on my couch and eating potato chips. Sometimes I am, but I'm not doing that on a regular, I'm out there, I'm doing things, but I'm following what's being put in front of me. And that's the direction I want to go in. So I may say, well, I'm thinking I'm going left, but all of a sudden I'm getting directed over here. And if I'm not attached to it, I'm not attached to a specific outcome or I'm not chasing a certain outcome, then it will be easier for me to follow and get into a good flow of energy. And that's really what I want to see you do, especially in 2018, as we get into this higher vibration, which is going to be easier to manifest and move yourself forward. So if you want to get the book again, you can go to chasingyourlife.net. There's a free audio preview as well. I think you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions, certainly contact me on social media or directly go to my website at Joe, N-U-N-Z, joenuns.com. And I want to thank you so much for sharing your time and energy with me as we get ready for a great 2018. But remember, clean it up this month and get ready for a great 2018. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Have a great one. Join Joe the second and fourth Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern for 30 minutes of high energy, no nonsense, and powerful tools to make powerful changes. To find out more about Joe or download past podcasts, visit joenuns.com. That's J-O-E-N-U-N-Z.com.